Hello learners, welcome to the Manifested e-learning forum. Uh, today's lesson is a continuation of the topic forms of business units. Forms of business forms of business units. In the introductory lesson, if you can remember, we say that uh, business units can be categorized into two. That is the, the unincorporated, unincorporated business units and the incorporated, incorporated business units. Uh, we mentioned that some of the incorporated and incorporated units include the sole proprietorships, the partnerships. Partnerships, these are forms of business units that are unincorporated. We gave examples for the incorporated business Units like the companies, companies, we mentioned companies, we mentioned uh, parastatos, 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 cooperative societies, and so on. In the previous lessons, we discussed in detail the sole proprietorships, sole proprietorships, proprietorships. Today we want to shift our attention to partnerships and in studying partnerships we will define uh, partnerships. We will also uh, discuss the formation of partnerships, how partnerships are managed, classification of partnerships. We will uh, learn in, in, in subsequent lesson we are going to also discuss the the types of partners advantages and disadvantages of partnerships we will also consider the circumstances when a partnership may be appropriate then lastly we will um, uh, focus our attention on the dissolution of partnerships we will discuss how to dissolve or terminate the life of a partnership. So under partnership, we are going to discuss four things, meaning, formation, management, classification of partnerships, the types of partners, advantages and disadvantages of partnerships, the circumstances under which a partnership may be appropriate, and dissolution of partnerships, and dissolution of partnerships. Remember the unit is forms of business units. We say there are two, they can be categorized into two, business units can be categorized into two, unincorporated business units and incorporated business units. We are tackling each category one by one. So far we've done sole proprietorships. Today we will start our discussion on partnerships. On partnerships. So we will define what a partnership is, then we will uh, look at how to manage partnerships. 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 So write down partnerships. The first thing to discuss will be the meaning. Meaning and ownership meaning and ownership what is a partnership learners a partnership is an association of two or more persons who run a business as co-owners you will recall a sole Proprietorship is a form of business unit which is 
owned by one person. A partnership, on the other hand, is a business unit that is owned by two or more persons. It is a business unit owned by more than one person. And the owners of such a business are known as partners. They are known as partners. Another important point to note, learners, is that uh, a trading partnership, a trading partnership is owned by minimum of two persons and a maximum of maximum of 20 persons a trading partnership this is a partnership where the partners engage in the buying and selling of goods but a partnership where the partners are offering professional services professional services for partnership that offers professional services the composition is different composition is different i've said a partnership a trading partnership has a minimum of two persons and a maximum of 20 persons but a partnership that offers professional services has a minimum of two persons minimum of two persons and maximum of 50 persons 50 persons examples of professional services include legal services medical services accounting services banking services and so on those are professional services or consultancy services where a partnership is formed and uh, is offering professional services then the minimum number of persons that can form such a partnership is two and the maximum number is 50 persons but for a trading partnership where the partners engage in the buying and selling of goods the maximum number is 20 whereas the minimum number is two persons so for example if part part pato my friend here is called pato if pato is running a partnership business together with another friend of mine rt okay pato and rt are in a partnership business that uh, imports electronics the nature of business is importation of electronics they have a partnership so we've said a partnership is an association of two or more persons who run a business as co-owners is a relationship between two or more persons who do business for the sake of making profit so if rt and patro are in a partnership business of importing electronics then we've said that uh, that such a kind of a partnership is called a trading partnership because they engage in the buying and selling of goods and for such a partnership the mi minimum number of persons required are two and a maximum of 20. Now, on formation of a partnership, the partners have to agree on how uh, the proposed business will be run so as to avoid disagreements and misunderstanding among themselves. All right? And the agreement by these partners, the agreement by these partners is referred 
to us a partnership agreement. It's referred to as a partnership agreement. So if Pato and RT have agreed to do business as partners, then they have to agree on how they are going to run their partnership. All right. And that agreement can either be oral or written. Oral or written. A written agreement is sometimes referred to as partnership deed. It's referred to as a partnership deed. And the contents, the contents of the partnership deed vary from partnership to another depending on the nature of the business. So learners, if you would intend to enter into an, a, a partnership agreement in future, we're saying that agreement may be oral or you can decide to write the agreement on a piece of paper. And I've said it's important to have an agreement so that you can um, minimize the chances of disputes. All right. So these are an example. I've used RT and Pato. These are, you can see, they are serious partners. So please learners, clap for them as they leave, they exit the stage. Thank you very much, RT and Pato. So learners have just said that uh, the partnership deed, the partnership deed may differ from one partnership to the other. However, there are certain common uh, features or contents or items that will appear. These are items that may appear in almost all the uh, partnership deeds or agreements. They, I'm saying they may differ contents of an, uh, 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 the contents of a partnership did, may differ from one uh, partnership to the other. However, there are certain items or contents that are common in partnership agreements. So that's what we want to list. These are contents, contents of partnership these are contents of partnership, contents of partnership, contents of partnership deed, contents of partnership deed. Number one, number one is the name of the partnership, name of the partnership. Number two, the next item you will find in a partnership deed is the address of the head office. The address of the head office. The address of the head office. Then there is the location and area of operation of the business. The location and area of operation of the business of the business where is the partnership located that is the area and location of the uh, of operation of the partnership then the term of the partnership that refers to the duration the duration of the partnership or the term. There are certain partnerships that have a duration or a period of time within which it's supposed to operate and dissolve, be dissolved. Okay? Then there is the objectives of the business. Number five, objectives of the business. The objectives of the business why what are the aims what does the uh, partnership intend to achieve 
Why was it formed? For what purpose? These are the objectives of the business. Then there is a capital contributed by each partner. Number six, capital to be contributed by each partner is important to indicate within the partnership deed how much each partner is expected to contribute. That is capital to be contributed because capital forms are a very important element in the success of any business. So it's important to indicate how much each partner is expected to contribute as capital. As capital. Then related to capital is the rate of interest. Number seven, the rate of interest. When rate of interest of capital. Let me write the interest of capital. When partners contribute capital, they may agree on a rate of interest that they will receive at the end of every year. So that has to be agreed if it's 5% or 10% or 15% It's important to have it in the partnership deed. Then number eight, number eight, we can add drawings by partners and rate of interest on drawings. That is rate of interest on drawings. <clears throat> there are times when partners may draw either goods or money from the partnership business. So when that happens, the partnership, the partners may agree uh, on a rate of interest that uh, the partners who have drawn from the business will be expected to pay. All right. So that is, uh, that may also be an item in a partnership agreement. All right. Then salaries and commissions, partnership salaries and commissions, partnership salaries and commissions will the partners receive any salary if yes then how much that should be indicated in the partnership agreement we may also have number 10 rate of interest on loans rate of interest on loans if a partner advances a loan to the partnership business what will be the rate of interest that uh, the partnership will pay the partner okay rate of interest on loans to the business let me add to the business to the business if partner a um, lends partnership some money, how much or what will be the rate of interest that the business will pay? That should be agreed. Then there is um, number 11 is a profit and loss sharing ratio. Partners have to agree on the profit or loss sharing ratio. If the partnership makes profit, in what ratio will they share this profit? Because remember, a partnership is an association of two or more persons who come together to do business with the aim of making profit. So if a profit is made, what will be the sharing ratio? And sometimes profit may not be made, but loss may be incurred in a given year. If loss is incurred, then what will be the loss sharing ratio? Is it three to one if there are two parties or three to two to two? 
they have to agree in advance. Number 12 is the procedure for admitting. Procedure for admitting a new partner. There may come a time in the life of the partnership that uh, the partnership would want to bring in new members, new partners. How is that to be done? There has to be a procedure for admitting a new <coughs> partner. Will the new partner pay goodwill or not? Or if a goodwill is to be paid, how much uh, will the new partner pay and so on? Then another item, number 13, is provisions. Provisions on what to do, on what to do when a partner retires, when a partner retires or a partner dies or a partner is expelled. What are the provisions? That has to be agreed in advance so that when it comes to pass, then there, is a, there are provisions that will be followed in making the changes. Then lastly is a procedures for dissolution. Procedures for dissolving the partnership. Procedure for dissolution dissolution of the partnership. So these are some of the common uh, items that you'll find in a partnership agreement. These are very important items, very important things that the partners must agree in advance before starting um, to do any partnership business. Because these are some of the areas in which disagreements may arise or disputes may arise. So before starting a partnership business, it's important to have an agreement on some of these matters. When that happens, then it becomes very easy to dissolve any disputes that may arise or any changes that may come by in the life of the partnership. So candidates, these are the contents of a partnership deed. I've said a partnership deed is also known as a partnership agreement. I also I say that um, a partnership deed may differ from a partnership to the other depending on the nature of the business. However, there are certain items that are common in partnership agreements. And I've listed 14 matters, 14 items that are common. And that will mark the end of our today's lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss the provisions of the Partnership Act of Kenya if the partners do not come up with a proper or clear uh, partnership deed. If partners have come together and they have a, an um, a ambiguous agreement, an agreement that is not clear, what does the partnership deed state? So that will be our focus in our next lesson. I repeat, I repeat, I've said in this lesson, when planning to start a partnership business, it's important for the partners to agree either orally or in written form on how they are going to conduct their partnership business. I've gone ahead to list some of the items that should uh, be included in a partnership deed. Now, in our next lesson, we will discuss the provisions of the Partnership Act relating to the partnership agreement and more specifically where the partnership agreement is ambiguous or 
is not in existence because there are some partners who don't either orally come up with a partnership or they don't have a partnership deed, the one that is written. So if there is such a, a, a partnership where there is no oral or written agreement between the partners, what does the law say? That will be the focus of our discussion in our next lesson. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.